Char. Today we are going to read chapter three of our read aloud, Tolliver's Secret. Ellen lugged her bucket up the steps and followed her grandfather into the shop. As he crossed the room and flopped down on the couch, he looked like a rooster with a broken leg whose top feathers had fallen over his beak. This will make you more comfortable, Mother said, tucking a pillow under his head and spreading a wool blanket over him. Best keep him off that foot for a while, said one of the carpenters. And just so you know, a carpenter is someone who works with wood. I'll make a crutch for him and bring it round in a day or two. At that suggestion, Grandfather groaned. No crutch. I won't use a crutch. I'll get well before you can make it. He pushed his wig off his head and ran his fingers through his short reddish hair. Today of all days, he said. Mother thanked the carpenters for bringing him home and shut the door firmly after them. Then she walked to the door and blocked off the stairway to the bedrooms above and made sure it was shut too, because remember the British are up there. Now, don't excite yourself, father, she whispered. I know you'll think of something, but they leave at 11, cried grandfather. Shh, just stay calm. Ellen wondered what was going on as she got an earthern pot from the cupboard. Grandfather seemed so worried, and there was the strange loaf of bread with a snuff box baked inside. She poured half the water from the bucket into the pot and brought it to her grandfather's couch. She watched him pull off his shoe and white stocking and wince as his foot hit the cold water when you wince. It's like when you're like, you know, ooh, you know something that you're in pain. She picked up his wig that had fallen to the floor. Sitting down on the couch, she stroked his sandy red hair. It was hard to see grandfather lying there. Sorry. All disheveled. When you're disheveled, you just kind of look a hot mess. With his leg hanging over the side of the couch and his foot in a pot of water. He looked like Ezra. Remember, Ezra was her brother. Ezra was always getting into some kind of trouble when he fell from the tree or got caught in a beaver trap. But never grandfather. He was the one who took care of everyone else. He put leeches, which is which are these disgusting animals, the guys that they use to like, they suck blood and they're like really slimy, creepy, crawly things. If you want to, you can look it up. I wouldn't. They're disgusting. He put leeches on bruise on a bruise or cut a vein or cut vein and let the blood flow out from into a basin to cure an ailment, which is a in uh, sickness or an injury. Everyone came to him with their troubles. Ellen hated to see him look worried. The freckles stood out on his anxious face as clearly as spots of rust. Would you like some hot porridge, grandfather? The porridge is like a oatmeal-y type breakfast. She asked. No, thank you, Ellen, said Grandfather without opening his eyes. What time is it? It's only eight o'clock. Would you like some tea? She asked eagerly. I could take a few of the officer's tea leaves from the tea caddy. No, Grandfather said again as he pulled his foot from the water and held it up to look at it. With a groan, he let it fall back on the he let it fall back on the couch. There was no doubt about it. The ankle was bigger than it was when he first came home. If it were someone else's ankle, grandfather would put leeches would put leeches to take out the swelling, Ellen thought. Now she knew what she had to do. She put the leeches she'd put the leeches on his ankle for him. She'd take the tongs and put those slimy leeches on his ankle, watching them slither around until they got a grip on the skin. Then she'd have to see them swell up while they sucked out the blood. She shuddered at the thought, but she'd do anything to help grandfather get better. Though it made her feel sick to think about it, she stood up and looked at the green glass jar on the counter. Once again, it seemed to her that the painted faces of the wigged gentlemen were smirking at her beneath their big white wigs. Pox on you, she said. Pox meaning smallpox, which is a terrible disease that went around during this time. So she's like cursing them almost, which she's just talking to fake mannequins. And to them, all although they really hadn't laughed at her. I can make myself do it. Gingerly, she picked up the jar with both hands and turned to Grandfather, who lay with his eyes closed. Look, Grandfather, she whispered. I can help you. Take your foot out of the water, and I'll put some leeches on it. Grandfather opened his eyes and smiled at her weakly. Thank you, Ellie, he murmured, but it isn't time for leeches yet. Later, when it's black and blue. He patted her waist. It was, that was kind of you. She put the jar back on the counter and hastily wiped her hands on her skirt. She saw how really tired grandfather was and drew the curtains across the two front windows to shut the noises of the street. Since that made the room dark, she gathered pine knots from the basket to start a fire in the small fireplace. Perhaps grandfather would feel more cheerful when he, when he could look at a bright 
fire across the room. As she sat down in the chair by the fire to eat the porridge her mother brought her, Ellen could see that Grandfather had dozed off with his arms across his face. He lay so still and quiet that the ticking of the clock sounded very loud in the room. In the street, she could hear the creaking of an old ox cart, which an ox cart is just like a cart they used to carry. They used to push around with either some kind of animal to deliver things. And then the quick jingling bells of a sleigh. But inside, there was only silence. <clears throat> Suddenly, Grandfather cleared his throat and called out crossly, Where's that boy, Ezra? Didn't he come back to New York with you? With her spoon halfway to her mouth, Ellen turned and stared at him. Had he forgotten about Ezra? He must be out of his head. Ezra didn't come back with us, Ellen reminded him. He marched away with General Washington's army last fall. Don't you remember? Grandfather clapped his hands to his head. My brains are addled. Must be from that fall on the ice. When at last, Mother pulled the brown loaves from the oven. The whole house was filled with the smell of fresh baked bread. She, bought, she brought the round loaf to show Grandfather what a fine, strong crust it had. To Ellen's surprise, Grandfather groaned when he saw it. Put it there on the shelf, he said. But what's to be done now? Ellen heard him whisper. This message must get there tomorrow. Couldn't your friend the cobbler take it for you? Mother asked in a low voice. He went last week, and they are suspicious of him. Ellen could see her mother's nervous hands playing with the scissors and the razors on the little table between the two chairs. Perhaps maybe I, I could take it for you, Father, she said softly. I could dress up as a man. You'd fool no one but an idiot, Abby. You'd never get home again. Grandfather's fingers played up and down the row of brass buttons on his vest. A barber is welcome anywhere. That's how I went through their lines before with my shaving kit and my jar of leeches. So Grandfather must be some kind of spy, Ellen thought with alarm. There must be a message in that loaf of bread that he must have planned to take through the enemy lines today. He said something about leaving at 11. As she sat there, Ellen had this feeling that her grandfather was staring at her. She could almost feel his eyes go through her. Ellen could take it for me, he said with decision, which means he's kind of made up his mind. Ellen could not believe she had heard her grandfather correctly. He couldn't mean that she'd send her through enemy lines as a spy. Mother sank down on one of the barber chairs by the counter and stared at him in startled surprise. A little girl to do a man's work? She's 10, isn't she? Almost 11. She's old enough. But father, mother cried. She was almost shuddering in her hurry to object to grandfather's idea. It's too cold to go sailing across the bay in December. A little girl would freeze with only a shawl to wear. She clapped her hands to her brown hair and ruffled it with nervous fingers. How could you think of a thing like that? Now, don't get so upset, Abby, Grandfather whispered. She could wear Ezra's old clothes to keep him warm. No one would notice a small boy with a loaf of bread. Quickly, Ellen looked from one to the other. Her mother wouldn't let him go ahead without a scheme so wild. Mother's blue eyes flashed, but Ellen doesn't even look like a boy. Shh! said Grandfather, pointing to the ceiling. We could cut her hair like a boy's. She se he seemed rather pleased with the idea of the disguise. Just like that, said Mother. You expect me to cut my daughter's hair and send her off just like that. You forget, Father. I gave my husband to the cause of freedom, and my son has gone to war too. I won't let you send my little girl. Grandfather was surprised by this outburst. But she isn't going to war, he said gently. All she has to do is cross over to Elizabethtown on an oyster man's boat and hand the loaf of bread to my friend Shannon and come home again. Mother threw up her hands. It's too dangerous, she protested. She set her mouth in a stubborn line as she shook her head. It's just too risky. Ellen looked from one to the other. Grandfather couldn't be serious about this. She couldn't pretend she was a boy. She was too small, and she wouldn't know how to act. Maybe someone like Dicey could do it, but Grandfather was looking right at her. I, I couldn't do it, Grandfather, she stammered. Why, why, I don't even know where Elizabethtown is. And I don't know, Mr. Shannon. <clears throat> how could I find a man I don't know? In her fright, she was... T tripping over her words. How could I go on an oyster man's boat by myself? Leaning on his elbow, grandfather beckoned her to the couch, which means he was like, come here. 
Look, Ellen Tolliver, he said quietly, I wouldn't send you off to do something that was dangerous. I love you too much for that. Now, it might take courage for you to sail across the bay, but it isn't dangerous. But, but I'd be too scared to do a thing like that by myself, Ellen protested. You know how scared I get. I just, I just can't do hard things you tell me to do. You think I'm like Ezra, but I'm not, Grandfather. I can't even stand up to Dicey. She hated to tell him that she had run away from Dicey again in spite of all that he told her this morning. He kept her head, or she kept her head down so he couldn't see her eyes. I don't have the courage like other people, Ezra says I haven't any at all. I don't agree with you, said Grandfather. You have courage when you and your mother walked ten miles to New York, he reminded her, and you had courage when you two stayed all alone in your house with a war going around you. Ella nodded. And today when you brought the leeches to put on my ankle, that took courage, didn't it? Well, yes, thought Ellen. It did take courage, but it wasn't the same as going across the bay all alone to a place she'd never been. We get over fear, said Grandfather, by doing things we think we cannot do. These are trying times, Ellen. Many people are doing things they thought they never could do. It was hard to think of an answer. Ellen stood, twisting her fingers, wondering what to say. She thought if they made her go, she might never come back again.